Methylene blue, wonder drug or another hyped up health trend. Today, we're gonna to unravel fact from fiction. Methylene blue has hit the scene recently since a mysterious dye was being dripped into RFK's uh, glass of water on a plane. We've also heard about it on Joe Rogan, Andrew Huberman's talked about it, and it seems like every health influencer is talking about methylene blue. It's being promoted as a cognitive enhancer, an anti-aging miracle, and maybe even a potential cancer treatment. What's the real story behind these claims? We'll dissect the science, highlight the evidence, and let you decide. Welcome to Doctors Rating Trends. This is a show where two Ivy League trained doctors dissect the latest trends so you can decide what's hype and what's health. My job is to find the strongest evidence for the trend and explain my, why it might work for you. And I'm here to stress test those claims. Digging for weak study designs, small study samples, and overpromised outcomes. Together, we give you a built-in second opinion, one optimistic and one skeptical, both data-driven. Let's get into it. Methylene blue is the first fully synthetic drug created. Paul Ellerich invented it back in 1890. And while he was staining bacteria and nerve cells with it, realized that it also worked quite well for treating malaria. It would eventually become the standard of care for malaria and win Paul Ellerich the Nobel Prize. That wasn't the end of its story, though. The selective staining of various tissues would inspire Paul Ellerich to go on and invent chemotherapy. So methylene blue has been a key part of our treatment for over 100 years. So how does methylene blue work? You may have heard that it turns your mitochondria back on. So let's examine what exactly that means. Your mitochondria is essentially a series of pumps across a membrane that use electrons to pump protons from one side of the membrane to the other. Once you get an accumulation of protons on one side of the membrane, the natural process of wanting to re-equalize pushes the protons back to the other side of the membrane. And the place that they can do this is across a protein, which is an enzyme rather, called ATP synthase, which creates ATP. So ATP is the fundamental unit of energy in your body. And the Krebs cycle, everything you eat feeds into this electron transport chain to create this gradient. As you get older, some of these enzymes dysfunction, especially as reactive oxygen species come in, oxidants that you may have heard about will actually damage some of the enzymes along this process. And poisons can also act on them too. Cyanide being a great example of working on some of these enzymes and making it so that the electrons get sequestered away and can't function in the electron transport chain. This is where methylene blue comes in and actually shepherds those electrons across, bypasses the broken parts of the chain and gets the protons pumping back into that intermembrane space so they can create the gradient again. This is key for poisoning, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but also just the natural aging process. This can actually create that shunt, which turns your energy levels back on while you're taking methylene blue. There's another property of methylene blue, which makes it useful against cancer. In addition to turning on your mitochondria, we talked earlier about how methylene blue will be selectively uptaken by certain types of tissue, which eventually would go on to inspire chemotherapy. This is the case for cancer cells in particular. Anytime that there is a rapid uh, cell division process that's uncontrolled, it selectively wants to suck up the methylene blue. And this is used in cancer therapies where you can actually put methylene blue on tissues with cancer. The tissues that have cancer will selectively take up the methylene blue in preference to the others and you can take advantage of this because when you hit the methylene blue with a certain wavelength of light, it actually degrades the methylene blue, turns it into a reactive I oxygen species and kills all of the tissues around it. There are a lot of claims out there that methylene blue can help with depression, bipolar, anxiety, and a number of mental health issues. The question is, is this backed up by science? And it turns out there's some really good studies showing that it does in fact do that. There's a number of different questions as to why this is. There's neurotransmitters that are uh, selectively released like serotonin, 
And then also the extra energy that you get from your mitochondria being switched on is another potential explanation. But one thing is for certain, and that's that we've seen some really solid studies showing that it helps in depression, it helps in bipolar, and has a way of actually turning off the, the depression side of bipolar without turning on the manic episodes. Uh, and there's a number of great studies out there that have shown promise in this space. The problem we see is that these studies are not followed up on. A lot of the studies are small sample sizes. And the studies that we need in order to recommend things for psychiatric conditions or mental health conditions are massive studies involving thousands of patients. This is because there's huge placebo effects when we do these studies that we have to account for. And we don't have those with methylene blue. There have been some follow-up studies. They're somewhat inconclusive, but the really big studies that we need to make these kind of claims that it's good for depression, we just don't have yet. So can methylene blue help you be smarter? This is a question that a number of different groups have tried to solve. There hasn't been a really good study showing that your cognition really goes up out there, other than one study that showed about a 7% increase in memory uh, that was studied on a small group of people. That said, when functional MRIs were taken to people's brains, the areas that normally light up in higher function are improved when taking methylene blue, even at low doses. So there is the some data and an interesting possibility that this can actually help you be smarter, have better concentration. A lot of this is conjecture though. We don't know exactly what lighting up a functional MRI means and how that translates into the real world. There's also been other studies that people will claim is better for cognition, but is being applied to bipolar disorder and crossovers that really don't exist in the real world. Again, the biggest problem is we don't have the really big studies to follow up on promising data of these smaller studies. One area of promise for methylene blue is in cognitive decline, specifically any sort of cognitive decline that has to do with building of tau complexes. This is an important part of pathology in frontotemporal dementia and also thought to be a contributing factor of Alzheimer's. Methylene blue was given to a number of patients very early on in the disease progression and showed that there is a slowing of decline in the active arm of these trials. We again see the problem with studying methylene blue. Great promise in the early studies, some confusing data afterwards, but the really big studies that can tell us is this going to help for Alzheimer's and dementia just haven't been done yet. So it's hard to make any real conclusions at this point. Nearly the whole world has heard about methylene blue and didn't realize it. Remember when President Trump was talking about using light and disinfectants to eliminate COVID? Supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. And I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks who could. right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Turns out he's describing this study. This is a study out of Germany that was completed in May of 2020. So right early on and a few days after he said those words, they published that when you give methylene blue and then specifically use light therapy with the methylene blue, you reduce the viral load and it had an incredibly positive effect on reducing the number of severe hospital admissions to the ICU. We're talking about the order of 2.6% of the people who received the methylene blue in the phototherapy versus 19% in the control group. The real question we have to ask ourselves is, why wasn't this followed up, especially when it was the absolute peak of when COVID was happening? Despite being one of the oldest medical treatments out there, methylene blue suffers from the same problems as a lot of supplements. It has early claims that are seem to be valid has some early studies that seem to be really good, but then there aren't the really big studies to back it up. 
we see things and everything from COVID to anti-depression to a bunch of other promising applications that we need more and it just hasn't been done yet. Like everything else in the world, methylene blue has some side effects associated with it. Everyone's seen the blue tongue in the advertisements. There's also blue pee and there is documentation from World War II that a lot of the World War II soldiers would note this with an expression that they'd say, even at the loo, we see, we pee navy blue. And that was in reference to their blue urine when they're having to take methylene blue and they're in a malaria heavy area. Other issues, there is a bitter taste with this. You can't have nausea and sometimes there's diarrhea, some GI distress. There are some rare side effects that are worth noting. You can get serotonin syndrome if you're on certain antidepressants. This can be life-threatening. You can get methoglobianemia, which is strange because it's, this is used for methoglobianemia, but if you dose it wrong, paradoxically, you can get a problem with that as well. High blood pressure has been documented with it. You can get hemolytic anemia in certain cases, depending on whether or not you have a, a, uh, a genetic disorder. And also, like everything else, you can get an allergic reaction to it. The other major issue at this point is that it is not indicated for general use. A lot of people have been ordering methylene blue to put into fish tanks, which you can use it for that, and then ingesting it. Um, oftentimes, you'll notice if you're ordering methylene blue online that it's for research uses. We don't have a general purpose methylene blue that's being produced right now in the United States because technically it can't be given over the counter for just general use for any of these medical reasons. All methylene blue is either prescribed or people are buying it for other indications and then taking it. So obviously we don't recommend it in this case. So methylene blue has a lot of promise and really what this boils down to is economics. At the end of the day, there's very little profit that can be made off of a substance that you can't put a lot of patent protection around. It's ubiquitous and so incredibly promising uh, medications like this just get their initial maybe NIH funded to see if this looks like something that's promising. But when it comes time for you know, the, the things that are going to lead to some sort of an FDA approval, no one just picks up the, the ball and runs with it. You can just make so much more money out of, say, a Prozac or a, a Zoloft than you can uh, methylene blue. We'll call this the supplement paradox. Even in the case of incredibly powerful early uh, studies that this could have really had a positive impact in COVID, I, it went nowhere. There is no promise on the back end that anyone was going to make money on it. So even at a time when the entire world was locked down, uh, you still don't get follow-ups. Uh, in addition to its indications that it's approved for, uh, such as the poisoning and the methoglobinemia and you know, its ability to go in with malaria, which is becoming more important now that uh, there's resistance being built up to the current malaria treatments. Uh, you're seeing reintroduction of methylene blue because it, uh, it has this really broad spectrum uh, impact that the malaria can't figure out how to grow resistance to. Uh, and then with mental health, uh, the mechanism of action is incredibly powerful. The fact that you can get serotonin syndrome from this if you're using S SRIs means that it is clearly boosting your serotonin to the point where it's becoming a risk uh, where you add it to these other serotonin active um, uh, agents. If it's something that can change your symptoms and it's purely for symptomatic relief and dementia and memory, count me in all day long if I start to lose my memory. But again, the problem, <clears throat> even though we had that wonderful study in the beginning that showed uh, an improvement in memory in a significant number of patients that hasn't been studied, you'd think with these incredible early results, they do that. And for the reasons you stated before, can't really sink my teeth into it and really make a recommendation on it um, with no big follow-up studies. Again, we're back into the supplement paradox. Let's talk about the benefits and drawbacks of methylene blue. So the benefits we can agree on is that it is incredibly useful for conditions like methemoglobinemia, which is from various types of poisoning. Uh, this is powerful for malaria, 
and has very promising data around cancer treatment, depression and mental health, uh, potentially memory enhancement and infectious agents like COVID-19. So some of the major problems with methylene blue consumption is that with certain antidepressants, you can get serotonin syndrome, which is potentially life-threatening. You can also get another life-threatening condition called hemolytic anemia if you have glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. So minor complications potentially are blue tongue, GI distress, and in some cases they have documented increased blood pressure. All right, let's go to the scorecard on methylene blue. Uh, starting with the common sense test, the more you look into this, the more impressive the mechanisms of uh, action are on it. It really does make sense that it would make a big difference uh, while you're taking it for a variety of different processes. Turning on the mitochondria absolutely is something that happens and all of the mechanisms line up with that. It's great for everything that it's indicated for and there's a lot of potential in mental health. As far as the evidence is concerned, as we mentioned, there need to be follow-up studies across the board. However, there's enough positive studies that this looks like it would make sense for a variety of indications. I personally think with uh, mental health, there's enough there for COVID, for a variety of these that it's definitely worth trying if the government were to allow us to have access to clinical grade uh, methylene blue. And that's really the caveat around this. So absolutely, I would do it if I could find a source that was clinical grade and had the approvals that it needs to get. But those approvals need to happen. For me, methylene blue passes common sense test. The stated mechanisms of action fit the treatments that it's being used for. As far as solid evidence, the big problem with methylene blue is that it has a lot of good early studies, but it doesn't have the big studies to back up the claims. As far as what I use it for the things that it's used for in the medical world currently, for sure I would use it malaria, um, treating methoglobinemia, and a lot of those other indications in the hospital. It seems like a great treatment. As far as the claims that are being made these days, you need much larger studies on a much larger scale to be able to use it. It also needs to be indicated for these and approved for general use. So on that level, I wouldn't use methylene blue for anything that's out there right now on social media. Well, that wraps up Methylene Blue. See you guys next time.